This is a soda siphon. If you're of a certain age, you'll remember what these were because they predated the soda stream type units for carbonating water at home to make soft drinks. If you're younger, you may notice that it looks very similar to a device used in coffee shops or whipping cream. Instead of using carbon dioxide, those ones can use nitrous oxide and they've got a different nozzle that's designed for basically letting the cream expand and come out whipped uh, for instant whipped cream. So the idea of this is that you open it up and you fill it with water. And this is where it would be useful to do a little uh, doodle of this. So it's got a dip tube goes down the middle. And it's also got this little uh, sort of shorter dip tube, because I suppose ultimately it is a dip tube again. And then it's got an aluminium cylinder It's capable of taking good pressure. It has to take good pressure because it is pressurised with carbon dioxide. And the pressurisation is done with this. You take this cap off, you pop a sparklets capsule in, which holds 8 grams of carbon dioxide. You, I'll just lock exposure off here. You pop it into this, and then when you tighten it up, it will actually inject the carbon dioxide into the bottle. I'll do you a doodle of how this works. Notepad. This is all a bit wet because that's just the very nature of these units. I shall um, put this vertically. So I'll focus down onto the paper here. I've just got a wet fingerprint on the screen now. Not sure that's going to affect the touch sensitivity. So if this is the uh, this is the top of this bottle, it goes down like this. It curves. It's slightly domed underneath for extra strength, so it doesn't. Uh, fracture it sort of seems so to speak if it was a, just a sharp solid corner and this bit that sits down on the top sits in and it has an o-ring provision for two o-rings by the look of it and it sits down about that height into the bottle and the purpose of this is that when you fill it with tap water it will only fill up to here before it backs up so it basically it fills with a certain calibrated amount of water, but leaves lots of space in here for the carbon dioxide to go into. You then put this dip tube down the middle of that, and it goes to the bottom of the bottle, and it's got a big rubber seal at the top. That rubber seal is going to seal onto the cap that goes on over the top, and that dip tube is going to go to the bottom of the bottle, and when you pressurise it, the carbon dioxide is going to be forced down that tube and through the liquid. But also, when you use the lever on the side to actually spray the liquid out, it's going to allow the pressure up in this area to push the liquid up this tube and then out through the nozzle. And it sprays out with a fair amount of force. I'll just draw the little fill port on that as well. So I'm going to start by showing you what's inside this. So I'll just put this out of the way at the moment. And I think I'm going to need some specialist tools if I want to actually open this up because I know that I've already fixed this by taking this pin out because it arrived with a slight technical issue. And I know it's quite hard to get this out, so I'm going to have to get some tools and uh, also improvise something to get this out. I don't know how far I'm going to get into this, but this is the bit where you inject the carbon dioxide. So uh, if you'll excuse me one moment, I shall just pause and try and take this to bits. It is now in lots of pieces, and I had to improvise with what tools I had available. Notably, this bit that actually spikes through the end of the cylinder has two small recesses in it, and I had to use a pair of circlet pliers and put them into that to actually grip it. Fortunately, it wasn't in very tight. It relies a lot on silicon o-rings to make the seals, so nothing was super mega tight, so it all came out relatively easily, including this outer locking ring that I used a bit of circuit board material just slotted it into the grooves, and then used that to twist it out. So let me show you how this works and how the one-way valve works. We have a spike, that's this bit, with a hole in the end, and we have a silicon, or, uh, not an o-ring in this case, a silicon pad that goes over the top of that, and that means that the spike is now just protruding through that seal. When the cylinder is screwed onto that, the metal cap on the end is punctured by that spike, and that's hollow. That allows the gas to come through to the other side. Uh, the 
rubber seal, the silicone rubber seal, then as you tighten it down, clamps onto that so that no gas can leak. Because generally speaking, when you, you put this in, you just leave the cylinder in for a while because as the water absorbs the carbon dioxide, whatever residual is left in here will then, uh, the pressure will equalise and it will then take a bit more in. This then couples by another o-ring into this piece here that was just uh, a push fit into the, the inside of this part. And it's got the o-ring there, it's got a little o-ring round the top, it's o-rings everywhere. And it's got a silicon sleeve, that's this silicon sleeve here. And when you put this bit in, it has a hollow recess and it's drilled in, but it's not drilled right through the end. So when you put this in and the gas is released into it, the only way it can get out in here is through this hole. And that's covered by a little tube of silicon sleeving. And what happens there is that because of the major prefer pressure differential, it actually blows this sort of tube, it sort of opens it a bit out the way as the gas escapes underneath it. And then once the pressure equalises, that tube then sits back down. And when you remove this cylinder from here, the internal pressure in the uh, soda siphon then pushes that shut and it stops the gas getting back out. It's a very, very simple one-way valve. I'm guessing... And this is just a guess that when they make these, because this is a, a metal cylinder, it's a steel cylinder, I think it's a steel cylinder, let me grab a magnet. Yes, it's a steel cylinder. I would guess, and it must be quite specialist, that they have an open end in this and they inject liquid CO2 in to a specific quantity. And then in the next part of the machine, it caps it by probably spot welding the whole cap on, uh, this thin indented cap, onto the end to seal that before the CO2 expands too much. Not sure. Must be quite complex. This one is made in Austria, apparently. I checked these. I weighed uh, one of them before and after, and it claims to have 8 grams of CO2, and it had exactly 8 grams. It, I'm guessing it might either be just in the pressurised gas form or even a small quantity of liquid in this. I'm not really sure. So that's the injection system. The I shall show you this. I'll bring in this drawing next. I've already made a bit of a drawing for this. So that's the injection system. And when you screw this onto the top of the neck of the bottle, if I point the flashlight in here, you'll see there is a recess. Can you see the little port? Not just at the back, but the side. That is where the CO2 is injected. And that it comes in from in here. I'll just shine the light so you can see it goes all the way through. And that's where that one-way valve uh, goes in. In fact, I could actually kind of assemble that right now, couldn't I? So if I pull this off and I insert this one-way valve into there, making sure the seals are all clean before I do so, that was one of the hardest bits to get out. I didn't know if it was screwed in or not. It turns out it was just a press fit. So that goes in, then this goes in, and then it screws in. He said, pushing on the end of a spike with his finger, which is not a good idea. Let's see if I can do this. If I can't do it, if I can't get the thread started or it's taken a while, I'll stop. But this looks pretty good so far. That is it tightening up. Not too tight. It doesn't need to be too tight. That then gets this little sealing pad on like that. And then this lock ring then goes on over that to hold that in place. And this is where I used the piece of circuit board material that I improvised, just because it was the right size. And I used that to screw that in. It's nice that it's not uh, too tightly assembled. It was fairly easy to get apart. I was dreading uh, with my uh, circlet pliers, uh, doing that thing where you twist them too hard and they suddenly go at funny angles. But theoretically, they should take a bit of strain but not put it necessarily in that direction. I could demonstrate this actually piercing the and the gas going in. I'll, I'll do that afterwards uh, once I've got the rest of this assembled. The next bit that's worth mentioning is this plunger here. So here is the cap that sits on. That's the gas injector I've just reassembled. The next thing is the device that actually lets the liquid back out when you squeeze the handle, but it's got a double function. There's this powerful spring, and it actually acts as a safety pressure release. So what happens here 
is this slides up and down inside a little port here. And normally this pad here presses hard against the top where the liquid and the gas would normally come out. And there's an O-ring that slides up and down here. This one looks unusually white because I had to wrap it, I had to take this, disassemble this and wrap a bit of PTFE tape around that because when I first got this, it was faulty. It was uh, when you squeeze the handle, liquid was actually squirting out next to the handle. And what had happened, this O-ring had been pinched. When it had been put in, and pushed it up to the side like that and that had actually stopped it sealing properly. And the it would probably have gone in itself, but I decided a wee bit of... Uh, the PTFE tape was going to pack it out a tiny bit further and just make sure it was a nice tight fit because it was slightly creased. That crease seems to have gone though, which that's all right. So this pad is normally pressed down there and when you cantilever up by squeezing this lever, it hinges in that pin and it lifts that pad up. And when it lifts it up, the liquid can flow out here and then down out the spout, down out here. Uh, but it can't go up here because of that o-ring that I mentioned. This has a second function. It has a powerful spring pressing against it. The spring is set for safety. It takes a fair amount of force to actually squeeze that trigger. Um, you can see that the size of the trigger versus the pivot point and then the actual little uh, cam that pushes that up is quite a high amplification ratio of the, the force. And the reason for that is that this is a safety overpressure device as well. If the pressure in the chamber gets too high, it will, without this being pulled, it will push that plunger up. And you can see this, uh, there was a video of people selling these soda siphons online. They said, although it says in the instructions, do not use more than one cylinder, an oversized cylinder. And I have to say, I, I did when I first got this. I used what I had because I was struggling to get these Nile of Man. Nobody, nobody stocked them. And... Uh, I ended up finding a supplier that would actually ship them if I bought enough of them uh, because they're subject to the pressurised capsule regulations. There's no way these are going to just blow up in an airplane, but you know what? It's difficult getting stuff shipped to the old man. But um, I did, uh, it didn't fit, it was longer than this one, so I just forced it in by hand and it worked fine, but it didn't overpressurise it. However, the video I saw online which shows them overpressurising one just because they wanted more carbon dioxide in it uh, when they put the second one in, it suddenly squirted loads of liquid out and a burst of liquid came out here. And that was because they'd reached the pressure at which that safety valve lifted it involuntarily and it just basically allowed it to vent out through the spout. So let's assemble this again. When I got this, uh, it was faulty and I contacted the seller. It was a fairly high profile company. And rather pleasingly, they, their customer service was very good. They just said, we'll send another one out. And they said, it's just the top I need. But they said, no, we'll send a complete new one out. And uh, they did. So uh, by that time, obviously, I had opened this one and fixed it. I had to drill a hole through the other side and push this pin out. This, this was the hardest bit of the fix, was getting this pin out. But now I, I've done that, I can... Uh, easily get it back in and out again just by pushing it through from the other side. Let's see if I can wiggle this into position. There it goes. So that's that pin in. And when I push this, you'll probably see that lifting in there. See it lifting up? And likewise, if you can actually see it, I might have to just point a light down here. There's a shield. Can you see it moving? Not sure. Okay. Let's put the spring-loaded uh, arrangement on that. So this spring goes on over the top. That's that spring there. And then the top screws on. And that spring is the calibrating device that basically sets the safety pressure. And it's quite hard getting this screwed on. But that is it screwed together now. That is it activating and pulling that little cylinder back. Now... I did say that I would show you this going. This is going to make a lot of noise. I apologise in advance. This is about to blow carbon dioxide out like a fire extinguisher out this hole, but it's just to show you how it works. Are you ready for this? Uh, this is going to be messy. Ready? Uh, if you've got your headphones turned up at the moment, I'd recommend turning them down because, uh, or your speakers, because this could be quite loud. Not sure if the phone will compensate, but this is about to blow the CO2 out in a jet. Oh, 
okay, that was interesting. And if you look at the end of the cylinder, it's ice cold now because it's gone from the liquid or the vapour to the gas state. You can see the little hole that's been pierced up then. That is ice cold. I'm going to put this in a sleeve. That is forming ice on it as we speak. Can you see how it's been pierced there? So, uh, let's pressurise something. And uh, I have to say, I could just show you pressurising water, but I'm not going to show you. Oops, slight jump cut there. What actually happened is I, I slid the focus and my finger just touched the menu select button. I'm using the Samsung at the moment. And it went into the menu mode and stopped filming. But what I was saying was I'm about to carbonate it and about to carbonate it with a bottle of wine inside instead of water, which means it's going to be super frothy. It's also going to be very, very messy if I have not assembled this correctly and have left the seals out. So one thing that's worth mentioning I put a tiny smear of Vaseline in these threads just because it makes it easier to screw this on. I found it a bit rough at the beginning. So you ready? I'm going to pressurise it now. Put my hand over the jet so it doesn't spray over. Here are the gas going in. So I'll just screw that on a bit. And then I'm going to shake this. Shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it like a Polaroid picture. That's uh, because once you've actually got the gas in, you have to agitate it to get the carbon dioxide dissolve into the water. So I'm going to take it off camera momentarily and give it a good thorough shake. And then we'll see what happens. When you undo this, you I usually leave it on for a while in the fridge before, but any excess pressure will be vented out. Not much pressure in that instance. Then I can screw this little cap on for cosmetic purposes. And then let's see what happens. Now the wine is not ideal for carbonisation. I expect it's going to come out very frothy. It's coming out as pure froth. It will settle down after a while. So uh, I shall fill this glass. This is all the carbon dioxide coming back out that I'd rather stayed in there. It's not too bad. It's almost maybe as if the water... I added a small amount of water to top up the quantity in here. So I got the correct pressure. Right, tell you what, let's uh, let that settle down a bit. I'll put this uh, close to here like this so any excess drips into the glass rather than all over the bench. Right, let's see if uh, it carbonated the wine properly or not. That's not bad. It's not as much carbonisation as I managed to get by abusing the soda stream. And you can't just keep, technically speaking, I could put another cylinder in of this. Uh, I wouldn't do that here, though, because if it does overpressurize the cylinder, there's always the risk of the cylinder fracturing, which is not a nice idea. It would be very messy and unpleasant. But also any excess would come out the spout and it would uh, potentially uh, make a mess. But having said that, this is not working too badly. I, I chilled the wine. Oh, that's something worth mentioning. To get the best results with these soda streams, you have to chill the water before you uh, pressurise it. It's a good idea to either keep some, put some ice cubes in here with the water or put it in the fridge full of water and then let it chill for a bit and then carbonate it because uh, the cold liquid actually just seems to be more receptive to carbon dioxide and it pays to actually give it a shake every so often just to get that carbon dioxide in because it relies on the surface area actually mating with the water so all that frothing bubbles inside as you shake it actually helps the carbon dioxide go in and then uh, I usually just keep it in the fridge afterwards but uh, this isn't too bad this has worked out okay hmm. and now we all know what's inside these so this did come off eBay I would not recommend buying an original one because all the seals in these, you've just seen how many O-rings and seals there are. They're probably quite specialist and many of them will be shaped specifically for the task. So there's a risk that if you bought a really old one, and we're talking from 1960s or 70s or something like that, then although they're very stylish, you might find that the seals are all corroded and sort of the rubber's perished. And you might find it difficult. I mean, you could probably improvise and rebuild it using custom cut materials and things like that. You're getting sort of silicon rubber 
things or or even a new one and then adapting things to fit. But on the other hand, you could just buy a new one because uh, they are mass produced. This one only cost about twenty pounds off eBay in the UK, and it is a new, newly manufactured unit. And apart from uh, that slight glitch when uh, it arrived and the liquid, when you pulled the lever down, the water was spraying out this part of the handle. That was the rubber seal that just got pinched and it pushed the O-ring up and allowed the liquid through. But uh, apart from that, it, it's been fine. I mean, OK, yeah, I had to fix that. And that did mean drilling the hole there and pushing the pin out and taking it all apart. But you know what? That's good because it, it meant that then I could take it apart in this video and show you what's inside. And that also encouraged me for the completeness to actually take this bit apart and see how the, uh, this carbon dioxide injector worked as well. So very interesting, well worth taking apart, and now I'm going to drink some carbonated wine.